<clears throat> okay, as you can see here, I have the speedometer to my 73 Super Beetle Volkswagen. This is actually a second one. I've already really rebuilt the first one, and the gear on the odometer fell off. Kind of knew that was going to happen, but where I goofed in, you can kind of see that pin that holds the needle. Well, I don't need to stop. Well, it's spring loaded. A guy on there is like, if you get the needle offline, it means that, you know, it's not pointed the right direction. Well, no, it more means there's a spring in there and you have probably too much spring tension, I'm guessing. And what happened is when you take this all apart, which I'll show later, or part of the same video is once it's all apart, you take the gear mechanism, that needle can come up and jump off the thing and it all goes to heck. So what I'm going to try is a masking tape, uh, something that won't hopefully pull the letters off since it's an older gauge, even a rubber band, and maybe wrap it around if I once I get it apart. I'll try. I'm gonna use a tape, but you can try a rubber band too, just to keep that from moving. And yes, you can see you got the screwdriver jammed in here. Basically, just working my around way around here, trying to kill not kill the light. Don't zoom in yet. Zoom out. I'm using my light. This phone is not good in low light. And just working. Oh, keep it at dumb zoom. Just keep working my way, twisting it around until I get it off. So, that's what I'm going to work on here. I will uh, pause it here, finish that, and take it off for you. Once you get it partially peeled, you might have to actually take the screwdriver and gently catch the lip and go around more to get it off because it's kind of tight. If you're doing it for prettiness, you don't really see that, but if, you, if you're a little more gentle, you won't have like this horribly destroyed. This one's painted, some of them are chrome. Chrome would be worse if you mess that up. But anyway. Yeah, you can make it to where it looks decent if you just take your time. So I will pause it and take it apart. Okay, now with the all the face pieces, face glass, this is just the uh, fancy part. It makes it black inside, so you can see better. Now that you got that off, you can take out four screws: two on this side, two on this side, or that one there. And actually six screws, then these two here. And then you can pull the whole faceplate right out of the assembly. Let's see if I can do that one handed. I guess I should have broke these loose before I got up the camera. You're like, this is such a good scene. stuff I can see here. I'm learning so much from my moving camera doing nothing. Okay. Okay. There you go. There. Now, good to have a Ziploc bag with you, by the way. Open that up so I can toss stuff in it. Now, we can and these screws out and these screws will not actually that practically right there will take it out because I think the rest is just holding held into this plastic piece but pretty much want to take them all out anyways take off this crown strap it's actually technically loose probably get it out there you go Still nothing. Uh, same problem with this one. That noise you just heard drop on the ground. There is a gear that fell off right there. You can see. Oh, come on, get this gear running across here. Worm gear goes to a gear that's missing there. Another worm gear here that comes directly off the wheel. That this drum. I'm trying to turn with my hand. But it's frozen. 
And that's what's wrong with this one. It's frozen. So next step, like I said, I'm going to tape this off so the needle doesn't move. Try to be trying to figure out the right amount of tension. It's really light. So that's where I goofed up with the other one. I put, I uh, wound too much tension. In fact, I shouldn't mess with that too much because it'll could throw it off. So what I'll do here is tape that off and then I will take two this one's never been apart because it's still got green on it. These two screws out here, and I can pull the whole mechanism apart. And I'll show you that in a moment. Pause. Okay. There's the little gear that came off of here. I removed the other screw like this. Just pull this last screw off. And this the mechanical portion of this. No. off a lot of, whatever this green glue is a lot of green glue in it okay do, do, do. So, okay and when you pull this off these other gears are going to be able to come loose because they're just held in by that not too bad of shape you can see the, this way you can get a good shot of the caked on grease that solidifies over time. It jams these up. And then this gear just lifts out of the slot. And you look at it from the side. There's nothing that holds it except for the other gears laying across it like this. So you can just gently, this way. Fry that sucker up. Maybe it's all sticky. Get a hold of it. And pull it out. And I'll, these I'm going to soak. And then let's see here. Yeah, this thing is like solid. You can see where that inner worm gear that runs that little gear is. And this thing is locked solid. See, will not turn. Now, so my eyes are getting a little did not know before I started taking these apart how a speedometer works this is a magnetic wheel this drum with this little tiny needle you gotta be careful not to damage that fits in this come on camera that little tiny hole there and the end of that be careful not to damage any of that people say do not grease it now this drum is nice and clean, which is a good thing, because sometimes happens this grease or somebody over greases it and it flings in, flings in the drum. And I think that's why I was getting the, the bouncy needle on the last one when it was kind of working. It was like this drum spinning in here with the magnetic force, that's a metal drum too, and it drags it along. That's why, like I was telling you at the beginning, of holding that needle in place and getting the spring tension on it just right is very critical. So, that's it. That's it. It's a part. And you're like, well, how do you fix this? This grease is a type of animal fat, I believe. This is notorious what this stuff does. Newer greases, well, it's hard to say, but I think for the most part are going to hold up better. Now, animal grease is what similar to something I call human analog. And I don't, I just like the word. I made that up myself. Maybe it means something. Maybe I'm talking like an idiot. Anyways, when I'm normally restoring turn to signal switches and anything that your hand may come in contact with, the grease from your fingers gets inside stuff and it really gums stuff up. And I've tried brake cleans and I've tried carburetor cleaners and different stuff. They don't work that well. I don't know if it's because human grease is a little water-based or something. Uh, you can use PB Blaster if it's got no plastic parts. It's more aggressive and will work faster. Not that what I'm about to show you. Here's the bug. It's in the garage. Anyways, what I use, because I have abundance of it, and it works the best because it will not. PB Blaster, when I was saying you don't use enough plastic or rubber parts, will swell bones and stuff. And... So, this was from the other night when I was soaking the other one, so just drop that in there, get that in there, 
Looks like I'll have to add some more. And plus, I want to spray it inside here. Yeah, you get the idea. And I'm, since I don't have any way of getting this done tonight, plus a few other things I want to do, I recommend soaking it overnight. And tomorrow when you pull it out, it should for the most part be completely cleaned. My other one worked like that. I pulled it out and it was perfectly clean. So there you go. As for part one, that's basically it. There isn't much you can do. Like I said, if you mess up that needle, like the one that's in this car right now, it will, like now it's 10 miles an hour off. And you see how hard it is to peel that bezel off. It's not like you can sit here and tweak the needle. That's what somebody online tells you to do. But that would just be such a pain in the neck. So I suggest um, either tape the needle down like I did. If that wasn't going to work on this, the next thing I was going to do was take literally all the spring tension, if I messed it up, to where the needle just barely would re return. But would return. I put too much tension on the other one. That might be the reason. So I think the spring is causing too much drag, and that's why my speedometer is off by 10 miles, but an hour. But there you go. That's the basics of rebuilding a Volkswagen speedometer. This will work on 73s. The older ones, I'm told, instead of screws, have really cheesy tabs that you could break off, so uh, might leave that to the experts. But there you go. If you want to give it a shot, if you got, like me, you got plenty of parts, Give this technique a try. See ya.